real talk today. Stop obsessing over supplements, macros, the different types of fats, when to eat your carbs, or how many superfoods you should be eating. Okay, get rid of those ideas. You do not need to make food and nutrition that complicated. You do not. Okay, now this video follows on from my last one where I talked about the problems with calorie counting. If you haven't checked that out yet, then I think you should really head over um, and find out some of the issues with calorie counting, whether you've tried it before, or it's something that you've considered. Today, I'm gonna give you though the foundations for good nutrition. And a lot of people, I'm not gonna like it, I'm not gonna like it, because we like complicated. Complicated sounds technical. I'm doing something that you're not doing and this is the thing that everyone should be doing. And then also, some of the things that I just talked about, the supplements, the, the types of carb, that's easier to implement than what I'm gonna tell you. And the thing is, they are not needle movers. They're just not. The vast majority of people, like 90% of people, do not need to implement anything other than the foundations I'm gonna give you today. They don't need to worry about supplements or carb cycling or anything like that. Yes, if you're a specific group of population, let's get more specific. If you're vegan or pregnant, etc., or an, uh, uh, a professional athlete, but 90% of you, which I can guarantee is 90% of that, that I'm talking to you now, you don't need those things. This is what you need. Okay, get your journal out, start writing these things down. They sound simple and that's because they are. The key to success with your nutrition is two things, simplicity and consistency. Yeah, write them down. Simplicity and consistency. So first idea, big idea number one, I want you to focus on protein, protein. And that is lean protein. This is the things to think about. So first of all, get it on your plate first. If it's a priority, put it on there first. And that can therefore influence the amounts of other things that you put on your plate. Lean protein ideas include chicken, turkey, um, white-based fish, um, if you are someone who eats meat, um, cottage cheese, tofu, um, and yogurt are other alternatives as well. If you're veggie or vegan, then do layer your protein sources, so get more than one protein type potentially on your plate to make sure you get enough you are looking at needing a good sort of quarter of your plate full of protein. So get that on there first. Your body can't actually store protein, so make sure every single meal includes that amount of protein. Potentially your snacks as well. So that includes breakfast, yep. You gotta get some protein onto those sugar puffs, okay? Every single meal, get yourself enough protein. And that's gonna benefit from two different ways. So it's gonna support the exercise that you do. It's gonna help your body rest, recover, and get stronger. Secondly, it's also gonna satiate yourself more. So that means protein makes you feel full. It makes you feel full. Um, if anyone's ever had their cereal for breakfast or their toast for breakfast, and literally they are starving by the time it gets to 10, 11 o'clock, then that's because you haven't prioritized food that make you feel full. So get that protein in there. Most people aren't actually getting enough. Secondly, this is the second big thing that's gonna go on your plate after your protein. And as I said, you've heard it before, fruits and veggies, okay? Now the five, thing, the five portions a day go higher, absolutely higher. They only came up with five portions of fruit and veg a day because that's what they thought the British public was gonna be able to accept and do. In other countries, actually, it's way more than that. So personally, I aim for at least 10 a day. And that should be the majority of vegetables. Um, so maybe sort of two to three portions of fruits um, and five plus of different types of vegetables. Go colorful. The different pigments that make up um, the different colors of the vegetables are really, really great for different aspects of your body. And then as part of the fruits and veggies, fiber. Most people, it's like this um, kind of thing that people don't talk about. They talk about the protein and they talk about fruits and veggies, but fibre, most people should be getting 30 grams a day. And the vast majority of people in developed countries are getting nowhere near that, like not even half the amount of fibre that you need. 
fibre is the parts of fruits and vegetables that don't get digested necessarily. So there's insoluble fibre. It helps things move through your intestine. And because of that, if you are someone that doesn't have a large amount of fibre, um, so maybe you don't eat many fruits and veggies, or quite often your food is processed, if you start eating tons of like beans and fruits and veggies, you might find you get that gastric discomfort. And that's not to say that you should stop necessarily eating your fruits and veggies. You can start small and then build up the amount of fibre or fibrous um, foods that you have. And then also you can experiment with the types. So like peas might be great for you, but broccoli not so great. Try cooking it versus not cooking it. That can also have an effect. So don't be put off by the effects of fiber. You do need it, absolutely. It's what your gut bacteria thrive on. Every time you have your fruits and veggies, you're thinking about feeding and looking after those gut bacteria. Remember that lentils and pulses all count as part of your five a day, um, but build up the amount in your diet slowly. Um, and then also avoid juices. So juices is one of the worst ways you can get your fruits and veggies because all of the fiber has been stripped out. Um, therefore that's gonna affect the amount of vitamins and minerals you can take from it. Um, it's literally just a sugar hit that's easily absorbed into the body and it's gonna the, um, peak, spike your, your blood glucose levels. So fruits and veggies, you're looking at needing about half of your plate full of your veggies. Remember your veggies count towards your carbs. Um, your more complex carbs are always a great idea. So sweet potatoes, um, pasta, your whole grain bread, sourdough bread, um, things like that. Okay, so far so good. I told you these were simple. Number three, therefore, if they're simple, there's no reason why you can't do them. Number three, get some water in you, stay hydrated. And that's going to affect a, a variety of different things. So physically, like there's a huge amount of water in your body, like 70% of you is it's got some sort of water in somehow. It's gonna give you a clearer head, um, give you more focus, but also being well hydrated starts to allow you to tune into your true hunger cues. A lot of people eat when actually they are thirsty. So if you don't like water, experiment. Try water with different like fruits, like slice of lemon, slice of orange in. Um, try um, anything is better than not nothing. So you could try your squashes, you could try sparkling water, um, uh, you could try kind of fruit teas and things like that. Um, whatever is going to help you get those in. And remember like fruits and veggies quite often have water in as well, like cucumber, watermelon, and um, things like that are a source of hydration as well. Caffeine dehydrates as does alcohol. So your coffee in the morning is not enough to start your day well hydrated. You're already dehydrated anyway from sleeping for however long, not having taken in water. So get a glass of water by the side of your bed, get it like really easy to access throughout your day so that you can um, keep feeding in that amount of water. Okay, idea number four is fats. Now, people have demonized fats in the past when actually every single cell membrane, so every cell in your body has a membrane that is made up of fats. So you need them. You are not an exception to nature and science. You are made of cells. So therefore you need fats in your diet as the building blocks for your body to make your cells. And the type of fat does matter. Don't overcomplicate it. We don't need to talk about mono and polysaturated fats. Ne nuts, seeds, olive oil, avocados, oily fish. That's the kind of thing you need to be thinking about. And you should be thinking about keeping um, kind of like a thumb-sized piece of fat in every single meal. Um, nuts, seeds, olive oil, avocado, um, and oily fish. Be aware of things like fried foods and margarine. They are not gonna contribute to those healthy fats that your body needs to build your cells. And then, this is probably the most important one. So before I tell you what it is, again, head down to the description section, drop your name and email address there, and I'm gonna send you my free getting started plan that tells you how to create sustainable change in your life without diets and without dietary restrictions. So you'll, if you are loving what you're listening to and you wanna go a bit deeper, get my free stuff. I could be landing in your inbox in the next couple of minutes. Go pop down there and um, subscribe. Okay, this is big idea number five, 
include foods you enjoy. Include foods you enjoy. Remember, go back to those two principles I gave you at the start. Simple and consistent. Simple and consistent. So your diet is not consistent if you've cut out all of the foods you enjoy. You don't have to give up all of the alcohol, all of the pizza, all of the chocolates, because you're not gonna stick to it, that's gonna feel rubbish. You're gonna be really pushing with the willpower, the willpower, the willpower, until eventually you cave and then you feel awful again. So find a balance. You might think about like 80% of whole foods that support your goals and 20% of foods that you enjoy, whatever that might be. If you're looking for kind of more drastic changes in body composition, you might go for 90% of foods that are whole and support your goals and 10% of foods that you enjoy um, and that are just part of your life and your social life. So make sure you get in like the cake, the, the glass of fizz with your friends, like whatever it is, you can't strip joy away from food. That is probably one of the fastest ways to failure. You've got to stay consistent and therefore you've got to love what you eat. And then finally, experiment. Your body is this fantastic, amazing organism full of trillions of cells that are all working together for your good and your survival. And there's so many variables in that. So you need to take some of this foundational advice and start to experiment with it. Like what works for you? What doesn't work for you? Take what works for you and throw out anything else, okay? And also, what are you willing to change? Because it doesn't matter if I'm telling you these, these foundations and you're like, I'm not giving up my steak every single night. Well, if that's at the moment a non-negotiable for you, then don't start there. Figure out what you're willing to change and that's where you're gonna start. I hope this has been helpful, ladies and gents. Um, head over to my next video and let's keep learning together.